Uh, Erica, I appreciate you being here. Um, so to kind of share with everybody a little bit of background, uh, you just finished uh, your work through our 10 week program. Um, and now, you know, you're kicking off a, a new chapter of your life. So we're very excited and blessed to have you here to share a little bit about your journey and, you know, what you were struggling with and how you have gotten to where you are right now. So I thought it might be good for uh, us to start, if you want to just take a minute or so, maybe do a quick intro for yourself and then uh, just share a little bit about, you know, what was going on in life when we first spoke, you know, and, and what was kind of going on for you on a daily basis so we can kind of set the stage. Okay. Well, I'm Erica and um, I have always, well, before, <laughs> I, suffer, I thought I suffered with anxiety and depression. Um, I had a lot of trouble um, just doing basic tasks daily. Um, anything social was a big thing of mine. Um, I, ever since I was young, um, trouble even uh, checking the mail was an issue for me. I just feared anybody looking at me. It was just, it, it caused me paranoia if someone was staring at me for too long I, I don't like I never liked eye contact I would have to look away um I always avoided hanging out with friends even um during my school years my parents never really understood it my um parents just thought that I should you know that I'll get over it you know it's just a phase or anything like that and didn't help my mom was really outgoing so <laughs> she didn't understand it at all she's I was always in my room cooped up just very I guess you could say like antisocial and um I realized I um had a love for animals so that was my go-to just animals I preferred over people it was mm -hmm. a lot easier for me of course right. they can't really judge you so mm -hmm. that always helped um of course I wasn't really solving the problem I was just hiding from it always running away from it. And I thought the less I dealt with people, the better I was going to get. I was like, I just need a life where I don't have to see anybody or talk to anybody, just like my family, uh, just a few people and that's all I need. And so when, um, after high school, it just got worse. Um, well, I did get married. I mean, you know, I have a wonderful husband. Um, so that did help. But again, I did start depending on him a little too much. Um, as far as like a lot of adult responsibilities, like bills and all that, like I let him handle a lot of it. I couldn't make a simple phone call. It was, it was hard for me to make a phone call, um, to do anything like that. I did not like confrontation. I just, I was a people pleaser, always a people pleaser. If someone was unhappy with me, it was the end of the world. You know, I, I thought the worst of myself and I hated myself for it. But, um, yeah, it just got worse. And I had to, of course, you know, you start to work. Um, ended up as a pharmacy tech. Uh, I thought with more customer service, I'd get better. And it did help a little bit. Um, but this past year, um, it did get to a breaking point um, when I started a new job. And... I had a, a a desk job and I was I it was quiet in there it was I felt I think it gave my my mind more room to think that everybody was judging me or watching me anything I do especially if you're a new girl and it it really really took a lot out of me I thought constantly people were staring at me making fun of me laughing at me they were just laughing about you know, random stuff, their friends, you know, girls that I worked with. And I thought everything, <laughs> everything was about me, I guess you could say in a funny way, but it's yeah. like, it's all about me, you know, like you say, like, you, you don't realize you're focusing on yourself the whole time. Yeah. And, um, you know, so that's when I, I, oh, I had, of course, uh, been on medication about a year, did, did help a little bit in the beginning just calm me down um but in the end it was 
one of the worst choices I could have made. It really messed me up. Um, I, I'm not on medication at all anymore. Um, and I'm really happy to not be on it. And um, I did start therapy before this program. I did about a, a few weeks worth. Uh, I didn't feel like I was really going anywhere with it, though. It was just more of like coping. You know, just, yeah. just there to vent. Sure. And I really wanted to get to the root of the problem, you know, and just get rid of it. And I didn't know that it was possible to really get rid of it. I was always like, well, this is my life. It's forever going to be like this. I will have some bad days and good days, but it's, it's always going to be there. It will always be there. And um, so finally at that breaking point, I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I, I really did not want to be alive anymore. I just, I didn't think I could face anything. Like I wanted to give up on life. I didn't want to work anymore. I wanted to just quit and just, I was like, I, I would beg my husband, like, please don't, please, can I not work? Please don't make me go to work, you know, but we have house payment, you know, we have to pay for things. I have to face it. I was like, I just want like a few weeks off work, you know, I'll get better. And it's, it doesn't get better. It just makes things worse. Mm -hmm. So when I started this program, I was at like my lowest. Um, I really felt lost and in a really deep dark hole and I did not see a way out at all I really didn't and I felt like nobody understood me at all it didn't matter what I told anybody even the people that would say they kind of understood I just didn't think they did I was like there's no one that has it as like bad as me like it's you know but when I started um my sessions this program I immediately saw results um, I felt so much more confident. I felt worthy and I, I, I felt like I, I wasn't a horrible person. I didn't hate myself anymore. <laughs> I hated myself before I hated myself. I, I felt guilty for anything that nothing that even had to do with me. I just thought everything was my fault. Mm -hmm. Something bad happened. Like, Oh, it's my fault. Right. Like maybe I'm just unlucky even like even those little things. And, but, um, I started to love myself finally, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> it didn't matter before, like if my husband would say, I love you, you know, you're awesome. You're amazing. You're beautiful. Anything like it just in when you're out the other, never yeah. stuck, never did. And now he sees the difference. He's like, you've come a long way. He's like, I'm, glad you take my compliments now I'm like yeah I believe them now I was like I do and yeah. I really appreciate it and I appreciate compliments more now I didn't really feel comfortable with them before I always felt like deep down they're just lying to me probably just like oh they're just being nice you know and no I I do love myself now mm -hmm. um, but uh, I did learn a lot <laughs> I, I really liked learning a lot about goes on in our heads and how to overcome everything and um mainly um uh like the swoosh pattern mm -hmm. um and basically like changing voices of people that like if i would hear voices of people that had yelled at me before anything things that that would make me really anxious like I would just he hear them say like oh you can't do this or what are you doing or you you're not doing anything right it was just constant in my head and now I feel like there's like a completely different voice in my head it's weird what? I just I noticed I'm like it's like there's a I don't even, it's I barely have to, I don't have to control it as much as I used to from the beginning you start slowly but I mean over time it just there and you don't even have to really think about it it's, it's crazy <laughs> and I mean yeah you know you do have your moments where you, you know sometimes you find yourself back there again and you're like oh well I can get out of it I know exactly what to do right. and and I really do appreciate everything you've done <laughs> 
and this program and it's it's really helped a lot like I don't ever see myself going back I don't and I almost forgot how it felt <laughs> yeah um but well I appreciate the compliment but you know honestly I want <laughs> it to be very clear to everybody who sees this that you know you were really the one who made the change you know the metaphor I used I think when we got started is um you know, you're the one driving the car, I can be in the passenger seat and tell you where to go, what turns to take and where, you know, to avoid, but, you know, you're the one with the accelerator. And, you know, the thing that enabled you to get progress so quickly and consistently is you just kept showing up, you know, you just kept working with the material and you knew that it was not going to happen overnight because anything that's worth building to, you know, anything that's actually worth creating as a change that can last is not going to happen overnight. You know, that'd be, you know, uh, something that would just be ridiculous. So you just kept showing up, you kept using what you were taught. You, we kept refining it and figuring out what worked and what didn't, but we just walked you through those steps, you know, and, and here you are. Um, you know, I think you touched on so many important things that I hear from people all the time, you know, the, uh, the feeling like there's just no worthiness, right? I, so it's like, even if people tell you compliments or whatever, it's like, it just, you can't absorb it, it seems. Mm -hmm. um, and then also that feeling of just overwhelm, right? Like, oh, just can't handle this right now. don't want to go to work, can't pick up the phone. You know, I think so many people who are going to see this are, are resonating with that right now. And they're in that spot right now. And they're thinking it's been like this for so long. How could I make this happen? Um, what would you say, like, you know, you obviously learned a whole giant set of tools and strategies and stuff. If you could look at the process you went through as a whole compared to what you had tried before, what would you say was kind of different about this approach? What would you say? So this one um, wasn't about just, you know, coping with what you have. Also you're not labeling yourself as someone with depression or anxiety. And you, that really is a big thing that you don't label yourself with it because once you take that label off, then there's room for other possibilities, you know? And I just want to add in there too that, you know, cause I think some people hear that and I think a lot of people have this initial reaction of like, well, what do you mean? I do have depression or anxiety. And it's like, well, yes, it's a part of your life, but there's so much danger as we learned right at the beginning of, essentially adopting that belief structure of, well, this is who I am, because it's not who you are. It's just mm -hmm. how your life is right now based off of some patterns and some thinking and some things we have to work on, but it doesn't have to be permanent. So good. Yeah. So tell me what else. What, okay. Yeah. So that was a big piece. What else do you think? Um, uh, another big thing would be, <laughs> I well, that's, that. what the, that's what sets the whole stage right is we're not going to just teach you to live with it but mm -hmm. how do we actually get it out of your life right yes, yes. that's yes. that is probably the single most important distinction i would say mm -hmm. seems like you agree okay <laughs> yes definitely <laughs> yeah. gotcha. maybe talk a little bit uh if you could about what did you start seeing as you started, right? Like from where you just described you were like on day one and now you're, I think we're at about 10, maybe 12 weeks or something like that, somewhere around there, a little over two months. What was, what did you notice was starting to happen kind of week by week for you? So besides, um, besides, you know, feeling better, not as anxious or depressed, I was more motivated to do things that I didn't before. Um, I didn't expect to actually be doing more like around the house or even looking at goals like goals wasn't a thing and now I'm like what do I want to do with my life like what can I do like there's so many possibilities and, and you get excited I see more excitement <laughs> you yeah. know you, you feel more excited about everything and you start to be gratitude like you start to really be grateful for a lot that you have you realize what there's a lot to be grateful for and you don't have to dwell on what you don't have or what you like you you can't be negative all the time and let those thoughts you know come in your head like 
oh, I don't have this, I don't have that, I wish I was this, I wish I was that, comparing yourself to others as well, right. um, st- stop doing that, um, yeah. stopped, um, you know, you're on your own person. But. I know you also said you started standing up for yourself, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> um, so it was really hard for me, that was a really big one, but um, of course, heart meditation does help a lot, mm-hmm. um, that's, um, in case no one else really knows what it is, it's more of um, really getting in depth and like meditating uh, and doing a lot of breathing exercises and really feeling that gratitude and that love mm-hmm. and being able to approach really big uh, problems <laughs> in your life challenges that normally you'd feel really anxious. So you have to like, set your mind right before you tackle those things. Right. Because if you come in unprepared, you're gonna do the same thing again your old patterns either run away or snap anything like that um so I found myself uh finding the words more of what to say normally I feel like I don't know what to say to this person you know and you just it just happens you know you just let it out you try your best and you say it lovingly and hope for the best and yeah yeah, they don't if they hate you for it then it's it's not yeah. it didn't really get me as much as it did before because I knew I tried my best and it was better to know that I tried rather than not right. to. Well, so there's all of what you just, I remember like at the very beginning, you're like, I don't want to go to work because people are going to be looking at me. And if I do something wrong, then I'm going to be freaking out and I can't talk to other people. Right. And you were talking about how you needed to confront people about things and you didn't feel comfortable doing it. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, you're like, my husband doesn't even know what to do with me anymore because I'm actually standing up for myself. I'm speaking my mind, you know, and uh, hear you now say, oh, yeah, you know, whatever. Somebody doesn't like me for it. I still like me for it, you know. Yeah. Like, so that self-assurance now that you didn't have when you first started. So yes, that's, that's really incredibly right. refreshing to, to see that. Um, I need everybody to like me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you talk about these possibilities. So tell me about... Um, what was life about back then and what was possible back then versus now? Like what is life about for you now and and what is possible for you now? So then I felt like nothing was possible. (laughs) Um, Basically just getting by through life. Um, All I wanted, you know, what everybody really wants is, you know, I wish you had more money, you know, you, you wish you had a, better house or you know I wish I had kids already you know um we want kids in our life um and now I'm like well I need to focus on what I want to do rather than focus on oh I can't do this Mm -hmm. thinking that you can't do it so you focus on what you want to go towards it and you, you go towards it and you don't think about um what you can't do or anything or you you start to realize that you can do things if you really focus on it and you're present and you're committed and you follow those, you take it step by step, just little steps, yeah. little steps. Don't look at all of them at once because you become overwhelmed. That yeah. was the thing for me. I become overwhelmed really quick. If I see something and I'm like, Oh my God, that's impossible. There's too many things to do. Like, Oh no, like, no, 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 no. Yeah. And now it's just like, okay, well just do the first thing. That's it. That's it. Just the yeah. first step. And then you're like, okay, well, now I can do the second one. You just take it little by little. You have to have patience. Patience for um, a change. Yeah. You, know? you just got to be really patient. And but, um, there, was a big, there was a big thing in your life that had been a conversation with you and your husband for a while, but with anxiety and depression as a part of life, you know, anyway, I, I won't, why don't you tell, tell us what, what was that and how has that shifted? What's, there seems to be a big possibility in front of you guys now, right? Yes. Um, so we have always wanted a child, um, possibly one or two. Um, last year it was, or maybe it's been, I want to say it's been a few years actually that we've talked about having a kid. I always said at least by age 26, um, I'm, t- I'm going to be 28 this year, by the way. But um, as I said, at least by 26, I want a kid, you know. But when that time came, I started freaking out. I was like, I don't think I can do this. I don't want this kid to be anxious all the time because I have it. 
you know, I just thought, you know, I'm going to pass it down to this kid. They're going to be anxious. They're going to be miserable. They're going to have a mom that can't even take care of herself. And now she has to take care of me. Like, I don't want the kid to go through that. (laughs) I just, I, and I also was very fearful of being pregnant, um, seeing the doctor, having to make appointments, phone calls, big deal to me, just a small phone call. I couldn't do it. So I was like, how am I going to have a kid if I can't even make a phone call? I have to make appointments for the kids in the future too. You know, I, I just thought of everything all at once and how I can't do anything. I can't because I just didn't think I was capable of it. And now when, uh, well, uh, over time, you know, um, my husband would be like, Hey, let's, can you make an appointment? I'd be like, Oh yeah, I'll call them. I just can't make any excuses. I'm more like, Oh, well, they didn't answer me or oh, I'll try again later. And pretty soon she's like what's going on you know I'm like I'm really anxious you know I don't know if I want to have kids anymore like it just started and it was really hard for me to hear that and he really want we really did want to have a kid I just didn't want it to be miserable but um (laughs) now um it is a possibility and I'm excited and I just had an appointment with the doctor recently I made the call it was nothing. <laughs> it was nothing at all. And it wasn't a big deal. I went to the appointment on my own. Um, didn't even need my husband there. You know, I handled it all on my own. And I'm ready for the next appointment. And normally I'm afraid to ask, like, questions over and over if I don't understand what they say. I'm like, oh, they're going to think I'm stupid. You know, they didn't hear me. I mean, because I didn't hear them. But I asked again, you know, I made sure everything, I got everything correctly. And I left and I was like, okay, well, I know the next step, you know, and it was all good to go. And he was really happy. He was really excited. He was like, I can't believe he was like, whoa, you did it. I was like, yeah. You know, Um, so on to the next one. (laughs) Amazing. So amazing. And tell tell us what has changed uh, in your marriage? You know, how has this impacted uh, your marriage, your other relationships? You know, what's going on for you there? Um, we've been, I've been better at communicating (laughs) when something's upsetting me. Um, it was always hard for me to communicate. I didn't want him to be upset with me. And then this whole cycle of he's mad at me. I'm crying. He has to come for me. It's the same cycle. And me feeling guilty for making him angry or anything like that. So now, um, I just gotta say it lovingly and he's totally fine with what I say even if it's like hey can you help me out with this you know or if I don't want to do something I'm like hey I I really don't want to do this today is that you know we we come to agreements better and I don't know it's just uh, we've we've been really doing really well in our marriage and do you feel like without the (laughs) without the dark cloud of what you were dealing with as a part of the uh, you know equation and taking up so much focus and energy that the two of you are just closer now because there's less oh yeah yeah that's yeah. true yeah yeah that part that's what always was the focus like constantly yeah. if we had a day off together you know you would think there's nothing to stress about we're gonna have fun together uh, we're gonna go swimming or something we're gonna go to my parents and it was always a breakdown for me somehow in the car because I was upset about something I was always in like moody you know and it was nothing ever pleased me but now I'm like a lot more happier or if something upsets me and he's like are you okay I'm like oh yeah I'm great now like I got over it like it, it's not a big deal anymore. <laughs> oh awesome. my God. yeah I love it anyway. yeah. so what would you say uh to you know somebody who's in the place that you were in just a few short months ago you know where they're just kind of really lost in the pit, you know, they're in, they've been in that downward spiral for maybe months or years or decades. And at this point, you know, maybe they're seeing this video because they're just trying to find any sort of answer out there or some ray of hope and uh, anything that could make their life better. I mean, what would you say to, you know, somebody who's in that spot that, that you were in? I would say that there really is hope. Like, I promise you there's hope if you work for it. 
you just have to stay committed and be open-minded really be open-minded just take a chance i mean nothing's worked before you know you give it a try you know and it's you're it's not worth trying to just live with those negative patterns all your life thinking that it's just going to somehow go away you've had it for so long it's not just going to go away on its own you have to change something you really do good mm-hmm. well eric i wish i could give you a hug i'll give you a virtual hug I guess. <laughs> Maybe I'll uh, get to see you in person sometime, but I, uh, I'm incredibly thankful and incredibly grateful and inspired by your bravery and courage for somebody who is uh, worried about leaving the house and going to work. And now you're sharing your story with the world and uh, your strength. It's a, it's a gift to so many people. And I think that's the last lesson, you know, is when you overcome depression, turning your previous pain into a way to give to other people. And yeah just the future that's ahead of you and your husband it makes me tear up. I think about all the possibilities and how those kids are going to have their mom fully emotionally available for them. Um, so I'm just incredibly excited and blessed to have gotten to know you and, and so excited to see what you do from here. And, you know, one thing I always tell people is change is what you do with something, right? So the journey in a sense is really just starting for you, you know, and, making sure you're taking care of uh, your mental health in the right ways, you know, is, uh, you know, going to be a, in a sense, a lifelong commitment, but it really is going to be one where you can keep these uh, dark clouds out of your life. And um, just so excited for you. So thank you so much again for sharing everything you did today. Greatly appreciate it. (laughs) I'm glad. Thanks so much.